Welcome to Shape by Faith with your host, Teresa Rowe. To find out more about Shape by Faith and Teresa Rowe, please visit shapebyfaith.com or visit the YouTube channel, Facebook, or Instagram. And now, here is Teresa Rowe. Welcome to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. My guest today is Gwen Bennett, the founder of Shepherd's Hand Clothing Ministries, which is a nonprofit Christian based organization. Gwen has been on Shape by Faith before, and we both were just talking about we marvel at what God has done. You know, Gwen, he has just expanded Shepherd's Hand Clothing Ministry. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, with with the people that volunteer and and as you were talking about the food boxes. But before we get into that, I, I really want you to give our listeners kind of like a recap on what inspired you to start this clothing ministry in 2014. Um, in January of 2014, um, the Lord started waking me up about three o'clock every morning and I felt that he was laying it on my heart to uh, start a clothing ministry. But at that time, um, I had had a surgery that had locked my body up. And I was like, "Uh, Lord, I don't know how I can do this. I I can't even turn over in bed. I can't stand very long. I can't go grocery shopping. Uh, It was a struggle to do anything at all during the day. So I... um, Every morning, he'd wake me up, and he did that for 10 months until October the 1st, 10 months later. I I told my husband, I said, you know, I know God's calling me to do this, and I'm going to start a clothing ministry. And so I did. And one day at a time, uh, we well, I actually started at Walnut Memorial Church on Byers Avenue, and they gave me the um, corner of a table closet to start, and they had dirty clothes in it that someone had, had donated. And that's how we started. I just started out with that pile of clothes. The Lord said, I don't want you to give out anything that you wouldn't put on your own family. And so at that time, we washed pretty much everything that came through. And we checked it to make sure there was no rips or tears or stains or anything like that. And um, we went from there to a Sunday school room at Walnut Memorial. We outgrew that. We went to storage units and we outgrew that. And David Mudd called me and uh, asked me one day, he said, Gwen, could you um, use a building to work out of? And there was a building in the parking lot at at Good Shepherd Church. It was Good Shepherd Church at the time. And um, it hadn't been used for seven years. So we went in and cleaned it up and fixed it up. And um, we worked there for about a year. And then you interviewed me. And at that interview, you said, at the end of it, you said, Gwen, um, what uh, what do you need? What else do you need? I mean, what would help your ministry? And I said, more space. And that was on a Friday, I believe. And on Monday, the pastor at, at Good Shepherd Church, Mike Cisneros, he called me and he said, Gwen, uh, could you use some more space? And I thought he had heard our interview, but he had not. And now we're working uh, between five and 6,000 square feet at the father's house. Oh, wow. And that's, that's how we started. Wow. I mean, I you just brought me goosebumps as you were recalling that. Um, I remember that now. And, and wow, God, he is so faithful. Um, so I, I, I know it's expanded a lot from clothing. And I know that um, because I've seen you in action and your volunteers in action. Um, why don't you go over you know, what are the ministry's primary focus? Well, of, of course, it's it's uh, clothing and then food. We had a we had a grandmother that that called us and uh, wanted um, needed food. She had four children that she was taking care of and uh, she's raising other people's children. And she's in her late 60s. And uh, I said, well, you know, we we don't have food. I mean, we're doing clothing. But the Lord just checked me. I mean, the Holy Spirit just checked my spirit. And I said, hey, just come on. We'll see how much we'll see how much we can put together for you. Before she got there, we had two carloads of food. Mm-hmm. And um, I went to the pastor after that because he had told me, he said, when we're not doing food, we're doing clothing. We're not doing food. So when I went to him, I said, just listen to my story and then 
if you say no, that's that's fine. And he did not even, he didn't say no at all. He said, let me show you. And he showed me the room that they had used as a food pantry years ago. And so we went in there and we started that in 2019. And the first week, first month, we did 19 people. Um, and it has grown. Okay, so this is 2019. We're in 2024. Uh, we're doing approximately 200 boxes of food every week, 200 families. Wow. Um, and so God has just blessed us. This is God's ministry. It's not Gwen's. It's God's. I mean, uh, there's no way I could bring in enough food every every Tuesday for 200 boxes for 200 families. So he has just blessed us. It's just unbelievable. And I've seen those boxes. Those boxes aren't little boxes. Those no. box boxes are big and they are filled. And it's incredible to see that and the volunteers in action as they're filling the boxes. Um, let's talk about who this ministry helps. I mean, do you have to be on a waiting list? Do you have to come in and talk to you and be interviewed? Um, who does it help? Well, actually, um, we help a lot of seniors. We help a lot of large families. It actually started out uh, for the food, for grandparents raising grandchildren, but it's obviously grown to much more than that. But on the clothing, anybody that is in need, and I, we don't interview them, we trust, you know, and, and we don't see a lot of abuse. You're going to find abuse in anything somewhat, but we really don't see a lot of abuse in the clothing. Um, people can come and get clothing four times a year. Uh, and the children, they get like seven outfits and they get coats and shoes and socks and underwear. And I mean, God provides all this and they can do it four times a year. We actually do it like uh, uh, four seasons, you know, just think of it that way. And um, uh, and as far as the food, they come every week through the line. Um, and we've gotten to know a lot of people. Uh, things are really bad right now. I mean, things, mm -hmm. groceries are high. Um, you know, this is not a, um, this is not a fix all it's, but it helps to get from one week to the next. And we have large families that come through. Um, we had a family of six that, uh, it, it just, they had six children, both of them, you know, both are, he's working She's a stay-at-home mom. They've got two special needs children, beautiful family, absolutely beautiful family, but things are difficult now. And we were able to clothe the children and uh, we were able to help with food and a, a few other things that they needed. And um, we see a lot of, um, you know, uh, young people, single parents that come through the line and they're very appreciative, very sweet, very appreciative. And, um, you know, we just try to minister to them, not just with food and clothing, but we we have a man that goes out every single Tuesday. It has to, the weather has to be really bad. And this man had a stroke in 2019, I believe it was, and went through so many things. I didn't think he was going to make it, you know, and he had to go through all, through all kinds of therapy after the stroke. And now he prays with every car that comes through there every Tuesday. And wow. um, they, they are so blessed by him. Our volunteers are just absolutely amazing. And you know, that, that does something when you help someone and especially when you're praying for someone, it also helps the person that's praying. It just ignites the spirit inside of yeah. them. And, and it just helps you overall. We've only got a minute left in this segment, but what percentage of grandparents do you see raising their grandchildren and other children? Is it a high percentage or or what? It's a high percentage. Now, I wouldn't say they're all grandparents, but there's a, a great percentage of people that are raising other people's children, you know, and there is a high percentage of, of grandparents and great grandparents that that come through that line that are taking care of other, you know, their, their grandkids or great grandchildren. And sometimes, I mean, this one lady I was telling you about, uh, three of those children are her grandchildren, but one is the grandchild of a cousin. Oh. And 
So her home is open to anybody in need. It, it is amazing the wonderful people that we have that we have met that are stepping up to the plate and taking care of these children. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Shape by Faith. Everyone stay tuned. Welcome back to Shape by Faith. My guest today is Gwen Bennett, the founder of Shepherd's Hand Clothing Ministry, a nonprofit Christian-based organization that also hands out 200 food boxes every single week. So wow, Gwen, God has really expanded this ministry. Um, let's talk about the work exchange program and how that operates. Well, the the work exchange program started um most of our volunteers are my age, you know, around the 60s, 70s and lifting and moving. We have a we have a lot of lifting that we have to do with with food and with clothing. Um, but we started with um, work exchange with uh, Teen Challenge and Dixon. We've done it with uh, with or we've done it with teen, uh, with um, Teen Challenge here in Owensboro, uh, Friends of Sinners. Um, uh, any of the, uh, you know, the, the uh, programs that, that, you know, the men, the men facilities, mm -hmm. but what we do, we, we believe in a hand up instead of a handout. Yes. And so what we do is we, uh, they come and help us, which they are such a blessing. I cannot tell you how much these men from Bullware and uh, Friends of Sinners and or all of those places that come. They're wonderful, wonderful men that come and they work with us on Tuesdays and um, they come and they do the lifting and the moving and all of those kind of things. But uh, they come and what we do when they get finished, we feed them. Um, I was raised that if somebody came and worked for you, you fed them. So we have to, we have ladies that fix their meals on Tuesday and it looks like a buffet most of the time. It's unbelievable what they do, but we want to show love to them. They're wonderful people that help us. And then we give them the clothes, coats, shoes, um, shirts, pants, whatever, whatever they need. Because some of these, that some of these young men, they come out of jail and, they don't have anything but what they went into jail wearing. And it may be off season. Even you might've gone, gone in in the summer and come out in the winter. And, um, but we have been so blessed with this work exchange with, with these programs. So how, how has, and I know the program has led people to the Lord, but how have you personally seen this program help lead people to the Lord? Well, when someone comes in and I can't say that we do it a hundred percent of the time, but when someone comes in uh, and we stop and pray with them and we, you know, the, the ladies, the men and the women that work with us are all very strong Christian people love the Lord. And um, they just have a sense, you know, and they, they pray with each and every person that comes in and we have actually we have two of our volunteers that they always have Bibles available. They have Jesus calling books. They have things like that. Um, ask them if they're going to church. We don't push any particular church. We just encourage them to to find some place that they belong. Mm -hmm. Now, within every ministry, within every family unit, there's always a little bit of challenges. Um, that make us stronger, but I, I'm sure you faced a few. So what are some of the challenges that you faced? Personally? Whatever, however you want to share, Gwen. Well, you know, I, I started, uh, I started uh, this ministry and of course my husband's had a stroke and I had a tumor and, you know, we've, we've had challenges along the way, but Every time I'm thinking, Lord, is this when you want me to step down and let someone else take it? And with that, he always opens another door, Teresa. He always opens another door. Um, I mean, I was just in the hospital a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, you know, I'm like, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? You know, but with that, we had had a board meeting a couple of weeks ago. And, and one of the board members said, when well, we really need a van. And I said, well, we don't have the finances for a van, but we can stop and pray. So we stopped and prayed. And nine days later, 
I got a phone call and this gentleman said, um, does your, would your ministry, could your ministry use a van? And oh, wow. we, had, we had a van donated to us. And, you know, I just asked God, I said, sometimes I said, Lord, I mean, I, I don't even know what else you could do. Every time I turn around, he's just doing something so spectacular. But then he shows me, I mean, this van was absolutely perfect for what we needed. Mm. That's incredible, Gwen, and and the health issues that you and your husband have gone through. And, you know, you're an example, and I'm not putting you up on a pedestal, but you are an example that we don't give up. We keep going. We keep doing what God has called us to do. And And that's exactly what you're doing. You're right. You're right. Can you give us an example of um, how this ministry helps children and um, and maybe people who slip through the cracks? Well, we reach out to um, the school system. We work with the city and we also work with the county schools. So, um, and we have a lot of other organizations that we also work with that, that con- counseling services and places like that. So if there are any children, not just children, but if there are adults, um, that need help with clothing or food or um, we have an amazing an amazing school system here the family resources are just wonderful they they work double time taking care of these children and so we we connect with them and they call us uh, last week we had one of the uh, family resource calls that we have a, a young lady that needs a coat in we had it and they came and picked it up and the child left school with a coat on. Um, we have a lot of calls like that. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right. So I know you've got a lot of stories, but do you have a specific story that you would like to share with us? I think one of them that really sticks out in my mind was during Christmas this year. And uh, it was a young lady and her, uh, her husband, a young lady came in, she had five children. And two of them were, one of them, um, well, they both were special needs. And one of them, she had to change his catheter twice a day. Plus, there was a lot on a feeding, all kinds of things, you know, that she had to do. Beautiful young lady. And she came and the only thing she wanted was she wanted uh, clothing for her children. Didn't want anything for herself. And as we were walking out of the building, I stopped her and I said, you're really tired, aren't you? She said, I'm, yes, I'm tired, but she said, I'm okay. I'm okay. This is such a blessing to be able to get close for my children. She said, my husband is working, you know, but she said, things are so expensive. It's just really hard. And so we, um, we, we just stopped and I said, can I just pray with you? And she said, yes. And with that, Teresa, she cried so hard that it reminded me of a waterfall. It Mm. wasn't just tears trickling off of her chin but it was like a waterfall and I I prayed with her and and she she laid her head on my shoulder and you know sometimes where it's it's just, it's not all it's not all about the clothing and it's not all about the food um That's right. sometimes it's just they need some of these young mothers and some of the grandmothers there's grandfathers too that, you know, they just need a word of encouragement mm. and just to someone to just stop and, and, and just pray with them. And that's our main focus. I mean, you know, yes, we need to feed those that need the food. We need to, we need to uh, clothe them and feed them. And, but they also, people are hungry for, um, for the Lord. They really are. Um, and for that n- encouragement and that love, just to extend that, love to another person. We're all called to do that. We're all called to encourage one another and to lift each other up. And so your ministry is doing that. You're giving people, you know, a hand up, like you said before, but you're also embracing them as Jesus would embrace. And that's what the people are feeling, that Holy Spirit touch. Uh, from you and from others, you know, that are ministering um, to these people. And everyone needs to know that they're loved, you know, and that could be, like you said, just a word of encouragement. Um, 
Before we get into more questions, let's take a quick break because I want to make sure we've got enough time. Let's take a break and uh, we will be back with more Shape by Faith. Everyone stay tuned. Welcome back to Shape by Faith. So Gwen, God has tremendously blessed the ministry, expanded it. Um, you need some heat. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> help help this ministry with some heat and maybe some more space. And um, the Lord will provide. He always does. Let's talk about your volunteers. Yes, I, I have been so blessed with the best of the best. Uh, I'm not really sure. I've, I've kind of lost count. We have about 30 regular volunteers and they come from different churches. I know at least 10 churches is represented by the people that volunteer with us. But we have one thing in common. We all love the Lord and we love to serve him and we love to serve people. And I have probably got the most kind hearted, um, most giving uh, volunteers and they love, love, love people and they show it every day. Um, they show it to each other. We're like a family that we work together. To give you an example, when it, we had the snow and ice last week, I, I called them and I said, listen, don't take any chances. Don't come. This will all wait, whatever. There was a few that didn't come. and But the majority of them showed up to, to uh, work in the clothing. People showed up to work in the food to make sure it was given out. And we were down that week, but we still had 128 families that came through. Oh, and wow. those volunteers were there to hand it out, even in the, the frigid weather that we were having. Um, they're just, uh, well, they work like they're getting paid double time. <laughs> they're that, they're that dedicated. Com- they are so committed. They are. And I have two ladies that has been with me almost since we started. Um, I, I, Shepherd's Hand's been operating since October 1st of 2004 to be 10 years in October. And they've been with me almost, almost that entire time. So um, we have, I mean, we can always use more volunteers, but they never back down to a challenge. Never. When I went into the hospital a few weeks ago, they had gotten 250 bags of clothing that came in in one day. Oh, wow. And I went into the hospital, which that left it to them. They all banded together and they went through everything and put it where it was supposed to be. And it, it was just, um, God showed me, you know, he's, I got this queen, whether you're here or not, I've got it, you know, and, uh, but the volunteers that, that he has sent, I honestly believe he's handpicked each and every one of them. Oh, I'm certain he has. So what are some of the things that they do within this ministry, Gwen? Well, there's a lot of sorting clothes. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you obviously 250 bags of clothes, you go through it. And if, if we can't use it, then we share it with other ministries. We don't, you know, we, everything has a use, um, has a place to go. In the food, the food ministry, uh, the guys that work in the food ministry, they shop for the for the food. They go and pick up food. They go through it, make sure that it's there's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, check dates and all that kind of thing. Um, and then, of course, they they have to. It takes two days for the for the food ministry to to pack those boxes, two hundred boxes. So it takes two full days for that ministry in itself to get the food out on Tuesdays at one o'clock. And then, of course, the clothing ministry never stops. Um, we're supposed to be working Monday and Tuesday. A lot of times I'll catch them over there working a few hours on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Um, they're just uh, there's just a lot, a lot to do, a lot more. Than, but the, the clothing ministry, the especially the kids department, they go through those clothes and they even match outfits and pin them together. So when a mother comes in, she can, t- we pull a, t- they pull a toad out and they can go through it. And most people take the first five or seven outfits off the top. They don't even go through the whole thing to, to see if they like something better. Um, they're very, very, very nice clothes. They're very gently used and some of them are new. Well, it's very so, organized. I've been in there and I have seen it. I've seen your operation. I'm like, wow. <laughs> um, very, very nice. Um, and like you said, 
all the clothes look brand new. When I, when I looked at them, they all look brand new. And, you know, that, that's just honoring people when you give them something that just looks like something that you would put on yourself. Um, do you have needs? Um, like, do you need more clothing? Do you need certain clothing? What, what about the food? Well, I, what are your needs? We, uh, we're always in need of food. I mean, we are, we've been, we're blessed. I mean, it, God brings it in every week, but we can always, we can always add to those boxes. Um, so we're always in need of food. If anyone, anyone wants to do a food drive or a financial donation or whatever, uh, clothing, we struggle with men's jeans. Uh, that is a, that men's jeans and men's shoes. Um, and the guys that come in, uh, you know, from the different uh, bullwear and places like that, uh, they're always in need of shoes and jeans. And okay. that's something that we struggle uh, all the time trying to find, you know, especially in the 32, 34, 36 waist, mm -hmm. uh, all different lengths. But uh, other than that, I mean, we're we're being very, very blessed, but we're always in need of, of food. Okay. And you need men's jeans, men's shoes. And like if someone wanted to, if they're listening to this broadcast and they want to donate food, do they contact you, Gwen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is your contact? It is 270-222-1389. Okay. All right. Our time is almost out. Is there anything you want to say before we close? Well, I just would like to thank the community for supporting us. And uh, we could not do it without the community. And we do have the most giving community. Uh, it, it's just unbelievable how generous this community is to those in need. Absolutely. I would agree with you. Gwen, it's always, always a pleasure getting to uh, chat with you. Thank you so much for being a guest on Shape by Faith. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. Everyone have a blessed day. Bye. Thank you for listening to Shape by Faith with Teresa Rowe. Remember to visit shapebyfaith.com to find out more about workouts, the TV show, podcasts, blogs, Shape by Faith products, and much more.